Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. It's the end of June and they're finally releasing some of the restrictions that we've had on fishing in the Northeast. And this is the first time I've had the opportunity to come down to the marina and to see what changes have happened, what the response has been, what the uh, enthusiasm is for the folks that may be taking a trip today and to uh, get a little bit of an idea about what's happening to the industry here given that it's been closed for three months now. So we'll, uh, we'll take a couple of looks at the, uh, the fishermen, the boats, the bait shops and the like and we'll try to do some speculation about what it all means uh, with the opening of the industry and the uh, uh, loosening up of restrictions on the pandemic. So my first impressions are that there's a lot of pent-up demand. There's a lot of folks that are at the docks this morning. It's still relatively early. There's a good rental fleet going on here where folks are taking the, uh, the smaller boats out into the inlets and the larger boats that uh, typically are going out into the ocean seem to have a very good crowd. The parking lot for this time of day is, is probably almost normal. And uh, some things have changed. Uh, we're noticing that folks are still wearing their masks, trying to maintain some social distance. It's my understanding that the larger boats, the uh, party boats or charter boats, are restricted to 50% of capacity at the moment. And uh, I'm going to go talk to some of the captains and see, uh, see what their thoughts are on uh, how it's affecting them. Well, we're fogged in a little bit at the moment, but one of the initial impressions is that there's a lot of pent-up demand. Almost every slot in the, uh, the front lot of this is uh, full. There's a lot of folks carrying a lot of tackle and a lot of uh, coolers and like getting ready to, to take the trip for the day. The uh, talk to the captains, the fishing is fantastic. Now that's, that's a combination of a couple of things. One of them is that there's been a total relief of pressure on the fishery during the pandemic. The commercial boats have not been out because the restaurants have not been open. And if your restaurants aren't open, you don't have your customers for the fish. The, uh, the restrictions on the recreational industry have caused about a, a two to three month uh, delay in the opening, and that's gotta be good for fish stocks. There's two big migratory uh, runs early in the spring here, and both of those were missed. The recreational anglers couldn't be out, and the, uh, the commercial fishermen weren't fishing those. And as a result of that, you have quite a bit of uh, hope that that will help restore some of the pressure on the, the, uh, the fishery. And right now, the fishing is good because nobody's been out there fishing for them, and the stocks have had a chance uh, to rebuild. So. Uh, very interesting in that regard. We'll, uh, we'll pick this up with the parade of the boats in a little bit. Our parade of boats, ever since I was a kid, a long, long time ago, this has always fascinated me. All of the anglers on board the big boats, the boats typically will hold up to 75 to 80 people. With the pandemic, they're spaced. It's every other rod holder. This one uh, coming into view here is the Miss Belmar Princess. Typically this time of year, they would be fishing for bluefish. Uh, today, they're gonna be fishing for sea bass. Sea bass is a rockfish. It lives in uh, structure and it's not far off the beaches. And this is the last weekend before the bag limits go down significantly for, uh, for the sea bass. So they'll all be out trying to get one last shot at it. Uh, before they uh, they close the season until November. Next up is its sister ship, the Royal Miss Belmar. You'll notice on the banner in the back it says Fluke and Sea Bass. Fluke is the summer flounder. For those of you that are not familiar, Fluke is a kind of a Northeast Atlantic kind of a uh, a term. It's uh, it looks like a haddock, but very much smaller. A large fluke may get to 12 or 14 pounds, but the, the typical one is probably going to be two to three, and uh, the fluke uh, is a mainstay of uh, this port's fishing in the summer. It's uh, close to shore, light tackle, and a lot of fun. 
Next up then is the Cap Cal 2. The Cap Cal has been around a long time. This is a wooden boat. Uh, it's probably going to be doing the same thing the other ones are, which is the bottom fishing, trying to get uh, the sea bass fluke and uh, potentially some lingcod. Those all uh, work kind of in the same family, same structures. And the sun is just starting to break through now, and what a beautiful day it's going to be on the ocean. So coming into view now is the Golden Eagle. The Golden Eagle is one of the boats that I do the fishing reel repair for. They have a nice crowd on board today. They have a great captain, all the latest in terms of electronics. To, uh, if you were in the fog, they wouldn't be able to find it. And uh, you'll see on the, uh, the side of their boat, it says stripers. That's a reference to striped bass. They won't be fishing striped bass today. They'll be doing the same thing. They're gonna try for some bluefish. I mentioned that you have two runs that typically are uh, have been missed already. One of them is the striped bass run that typically comes in March and April, and uh, those bass head up. Uh, you often hear that Long Island is a great uh, fishing destination for striped bass, particularly out on Montauk in New Jersey. We see those striped bass just as they they are on their way up. The second run we missed was in April. Typically, the April run is for bluefish. The bluefish are the ones that are coming out of North Carolina and they're heading up to Kennebunkport in uh, Massachusetts and Maine uh, where they'll summer over. And uh, we've had reports here that there's juveniles. The juveniles are the fish that are in the one to three pound range, typically a year or two old. And uh, they stick around here. And, uh, but you won't see the, the racers, which are the ones that were first up. And you won't see the, uh, the larger fish until a little bit later in the summer. So the bait is good. The boats are out there. Everybody's filled with enthusiasm. You'll see a lot of local uh, pleasure boats right in the water here. They're fishing the inlet. And uh, you can pick up some of the varieties that we were just talking about there. The fellows fishing off the, uh, near the pier here trying to get some structure. But uh, typically you'll find small bluefish, you'll find some small striped bass, some fluke, and others. You'll also see what I call tag-alongs. Maybe that's what this fellow's doing right now. There's a lot of folks that want to go in the ocean and don't know where to go. So they'll tag along with the, uh, the big boats that just went out there. They'll follow them out, trying to get some intelligence about where those guys are fishing and uh, try and hang on with them unless they're, uh, they're going deep into the ocean. These craft here, probably can go out a couple of miles offshore, but you wouldn't want to be too much further out than that because if the, the weather turns and it gets ugly, it, it's a pretty tough ride in. So that's the Parade of Boats. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more a little bit later uh, on some of the other aspects of the economy that I've been having conversations with. But for now, uh, I hope you appreciate that. And I'm just noticing, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up, but that's one heck of a spider right there. We are back to where we started. Some of the changes have been noted, 50% capacity and like. And here's, uh, here's some guidelines that uh, were put out there by the Golden Eagle. Face coverings must be worn during boarding and de-embarking the vessel and any time you enter the cabin. Social distancing guidelines must be complied with at all times. The railing has been marked with red and white tape where you can stand and uh, only one fishing pole per person will be allowed at the rail. If you have any symptoms of COVID-19, fever, chills, coughing, you will not be allowed to board the vessel or be near any of the crew on the dock while they're taking customer's temperature uh, before boarding. And finally, no one except the crew is allowed in the pilot house under any circumstances. So things have changed to some extent, but they've also remained constant to some extent. As we saw during the parade of boats, there was a lot of folks out there anxious to, to come back and, and take the journey out for the day, try and catch uh, some beautiful day on the ocean. We can see that the fog is just burning off now. And what you can also see, the reason I walked down here is that all of those boats that were in the line prior to uh, uh, setting sail, they're all gone. So it's a good day for the business and about that business. So I've talked to some of the captains and uh, there was some speculation that some of the boats might not come back. Uh, there's, you know, each one of these boats has a mortgage. 
and that mortgage is just like a retail store in terms of an obligation that they need to pay whether they're open or not and a lot of the folks that uh, that have those mortgages just won't be able to make it up a lot of the captains down here just hope to break even this season and uh, they're doing some things that they wouldn't have done in the past they're running secondary trips in the afternoon where the afternoon used to be a quiet time for them they're out there running uh, double double runs now that costs them more in fuel costs them more in bait but if they can make some profit on that uh, that'll help get them through uh, a lot of the fares have gone up I think that's probably understandable uh, fares are sensitive but again if you uh, got mortgages to meet and you're behind three months of inactivity uh, I think that's what we're gonna see in a lot of things uh, I'm, I'm certain that the barbers and the hairstylists and and other folks that uh, are behind you're gonna see some increases in that so uh, fares have gone up a lot of the discounts at least temporarily have been suspended uh, but one of the things that I noted in an earlier video that I just think is fantastic and uh, it belongs again to the Golden Eagle, which is why I'm proud to be associated with them uh, in a minimum way. But the Golden Eagle has been offering free trips on Wednesday afternoons to all first responders as a thank you. And uh, I'm sure their economics of the, their boat is no different than anybody else's. I'm sure they're behind. They're certainly not going to have a good economic season. They might have a good fishing season. But just as a way to say thank you to all the first responders, Captain Rich Falcone has uh, dedicated Wednesday afternoon trips free of charge to first responders. And it's only first responders that go on that, uh, that trip. So a real shout out to him. And personally, a shout out as I try to do in most of my videos, if you are a first responder, thank you so much for everything that you've done to keep us safe, try to keep us healthy. And to those that have contracted this virus, uh, try to nurse them back to health. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed this. I've certainly enjoyed it. It's, uh, I wasn't expecting quite the, the uh, activity that I did see this morning, but that's encouraging. And I can tell you, I've never been busier because a lot of folks have been taking the time off to get their reels tuned up and repaired and ready for this day. So it's nice to see that they're actually going to go put them in use now. So with that, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.